Hi there everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the surface area to volume ratio and the importance of it in biology. So to start then, it's all to do with exchange surfaces in organisms and this is what explains how many exchange surfaces, whether that's for gas exchange or absorption and digestion, they have similar adaptations to try and make the transport across those surfaces more efficient. So we'll be looking at the maths behind the surface area to volume ratio. Then we'll have a look at some examples of the adaptations. So it's all to do with, as I said, the relationship between the size of the organism, because that is what determines the surface area to volume ratio, or it could be structures within the organism, which are adaptations to increase the surface area. Um, and that is to help significantly with either gas exchange or absorption after digestion. So the maths, first of all, the surface area to volume ratio, you could be asked to calculate this in GCSE or in A-level. So we're going to start with some uniform shapes with cubes. So this one here is one centimetre by one by one. So to work out the surface area, you need to work out the area of one side of the cube, which would be one times one. And then there are six sides to the cube, so times it by six. So the surface area is six centimetres squared. The volume is timesing the width by the length by the height. So one times one times one, which is one centimetre cubed. The final stage then, surface area to volume ratio, what that means is divide the surface area by the volume. And in that case, or this case, it's six. So then if we double the size of one of the lengths, so in now instead of one centimetre, we have two centimetres, and we go through the same idea. Surface area, so we need to work out the surface area of one side of the cube, so two times two, and then there's six faces to the cube, so two times two times six gives us 24. The volume times in the width, the length and the height, which is two by two by two, which is eight. 24 divided by eight is three. And then same thing again, I've done for three centimeters. And what we can see from this is a key pattern. The larger the object, in this case cube, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio. And that is of key importance in biology because if we were to substitute these cubes for organisms, what that tells us is very, very small microscopic organisms have larger surface area to volume ratios. So they'll be able to really efficiently diffuse substances across their surface. But as an organism gets bigger, their surface area to volume ratio drops. Therefore, they can't just diffuse gases across their surface. They have to have adaptations inside of them or on the outside to help increase their surface area. And that's the relevance of this maths in biology. So one more example of the maths. We've got our surface area of a cuboid this time. And we need to work out the surface area of all six sides. So two of the sides are five by three. Two of the sides are two by five, and two of the sides are three by two. Add that all together, our surface area is 62 centimetres squared. The volume, two times three times five, and that comes to 30. Surface area divided by the volume, which is what the ratio is, that comes to 2.07. So that's one skill linked to this topic. You could be asked to calculate the surface area to volume ratio, and this is what they're referring to. The biology element then, just to recap that, smaller organisms, so for example an amoeba, naturally have a very large surface area compared to their tiny, tiny volume. So that means they already have a big enough surface to exchange substances without any additional adaptations. And also, there's a very, very short diffusion distance from the outside to the centre of the organism. 
So as a result, they don't have any additional adaptations. And the way that organisms like amoeba get oxygen for respiration is by simple diffusion across their surface. In contrast, larger organisms, so this would count as humans. Um, you'll be learning about fish, which I can link up here. You'll be learning about insects and plants as well, all as larger organisms. And here we can see that larger organisms do have smaller surface area to volume ratios. And that also means there's a bigger distance from the outside to the very, very center of their body. They will also typically have much higher metabolic rates, which means the speed of the chemical reactions. And therefore there's bigger demands to remove waste, but also to get enough oxygen and glucose to cells for respiration. And that's because the bigger you are, the more cells you have. So as a result, larger organisms will have adaptations to try and increase the surface area without reducing their volume too much to provide more efficient exchange surfaces for gas exchange or absorption. So last thing then is looking at some of these adaptations. So villi and microvilli, we have folds here on the villi and the villi themselves are covered in these microvilli, which also have additional folds. Now, all of those folds significantly increase the surface area without reducing the volume too much. So that increases the surface area to volume ratio for more efficient absorption of digested food. Alveoli and bronchioles. So the fact that there are millions of alveoli in both lungs and the bronchioles branch as well increases the surface area. And if you want to learn more about that, I'll link the video on human gas exchange just here. So insects as well have adaptations to increase the surface area to volume ratio for gas exchange. And that is all the spiracles along their abdomen and all of the branching tracheals and tracheal system. And again, here's the linked video to find out more about gas exchange in terrestrial insects. Gill filaments and lamellae in fish. So yet again, another example of adaptations. And if you want to know more, here's the link for extra details on gas exchange in fish. Plants also, so larger plants do have adaptations as well. So the fact that leaves are really broad and thin, that is going to increase the surface area to maximize gas exchange also. And then another thing just to bear in mind is the fact that capillaries occur as capillary networks or capillary beds means that there's a very, very large number of capillaries providing a large surface area for gas exchange at cells or at tissues. So those are the adaptations that larger organisms have to overcome their small surface area to volume ratio to provide a larger surface area to volume ratio at exchange surfaces. I hope you have found that helpful today. If you have, give it a thumbs up and make sure you click the subscribe symbol to keep up to date with the latest videos.